باللاتينية بحط لأمي عيوني لبي قلبي وهذا الشيء لأنه بيعتقد هو أنه من الأمور الطبيعية عند اللبناني أنه يعبر عن حبه للقريبين بهالطريقة I know Dr. John that you did a lot of researches and studies hundreds of them about the Arab diaspora in the United States and Brazil. Can you give us some figures about that? How many Lebanese are there in the United States and in Brazil? Historically speaking, um, before 1930, uh, immigrants which were largely from present-day Lebanon, Syria, and, and Palestine as well, from Belal al-Sham, uh, they spread out evenly between the United States, Brazil, Argentina, throughout the Americas. Uh, there was probably a, about 130,000 uh, to you know, the United States, 130,000 to Brazil, and, and, and fewer to Argentina. Uh, after 1930, after World War, after World War II especially, uh, these numbers really fell for, for Latin America, uh, and they increased only for the United States. Today, estimates uh, of Arabs in the United States range from uh, very low numbers, uh, roughly two, three million, uh, to maybe four million. In Brazil, however, even though Brazil has actually received fewer uh, fewer immigrants, uh, estimates of, of, of those people of Lebanese or Syrian or Arab origin, uh, number of people claim seven, eight million, nine million. Um, in other words, uh, Arabs in the United States have been historically underestimated and in Brazil they have been overestimated. That is, in, in my work, I understand this difference to speak volumes about the way that the United States uh, underestimates Arabs, doesn't really accept the Arabs that are even here, that have been born here, you know, second, third, fourth generation. While in, the, in Brazil, uh, the fact that major media uh, constantly cite very large numbers, overestimates, very exaggerated, I would say, but this actually tells us something about uh, the Brazilian nation and the space that it opens up uh, for Arabs uh, within Brazil, uh, in contrast to, to the United States. كنت عم بسأله إنه هو أكيد عمل كتير دراسات عن العرب يعني عمل مئات الدراسات عن العرب تاريخهم وتاريخ تهجيرهم إلى أمريكا والبرازيل ويعتبر إنه أكيد الجيل اللبناني بالبرازيل اليوم كبيرة جدا جدا وبأمريكا زادت كتير من بعد الحرب العالمية الأولى وخاصة بعد 1930 وأكيد بكتابه بيحكي أكثر عن الموضوع. Uh, دكتور كرم، in your book you emphasize on the political uh, economy uh, in your first chapter. Uh, uh, why is it so important? Uh, the main idea behind uh, is to explore the greater recognition of second, third, even fourth generation. Brazilians of Syrian Lebanese descent. And so in that first chapter, when I focus on political economy, uh, to give a brief example, uh, Brazilian elites in the, in, the, in the first half of the 20th century, for example, uh, they were uh, denigrated, they were derided. Um, um, they were seen as cunning traders who stole the wealth of Brazil. Uh, they were viewed to have a, almost an inborn business acumen, uh, an innate business acumen, which is familiar um, to Lebanese and Lebanon. But, uh, but Brazilian elites viewed them as, 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 as dishonest, as, uh, as stealing the wealth of the Brazilian nation. From probably the 1970s onward, however, the, this kind of, this idea that, that Lebanese have this inborn business acumen uh, began to be celebrated, welcomed by Brazilian elites, non-Arab Brazilian mm -hmm. elites. Uh, especially uh, by, the, by those uh, 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 as Brazil wants to increase its exports to the Arab world. Uh, in particular, 
uh, the Brazilian state itself goes to third, fourth generation Syrian Lebanese who don't speak Arabic, uh, but they're seen as the best kind of businessmen to do to yeah. to sell Brazilian uh, yeah. products to yeah. the the Arab world. Um, uh, and so, with the focus, uh, this is the focus on. بكتابه بيحكي كثير عن السياسة الاقتصادية وبيقول كيف بأول العشرينات جربوا اللبنانية أنه يشتغلوا بالتجارة وقدروا يعني قدروا أكيد يوصلوا على نوع من الثقة ومن هيك منلاحظ هلا بالسبعينات كيف صار في أكثر يمكن سلعة برازيلية وأمريكية عم توصل على لبنان وعم بيصير في اكيد معارض بالبلدان ان كان بلبنان عن السلع البرازيليه والامريكيه وبامريكا والبرازيل عن المنتوجات اللبنانيه وهذا الشيء كثير رائع. دكتور كرم وات از ذا مين ديفرنسز بين ذا Arabs ليفينغ ان ذا ستيتس اند ذا Arabs او لبنانيز اولسو انكلودينغ ذا لبنانيز ليفينغ ان برازيل. اي دونت ثينك ات It's, it's not a question of what Arabs did in Brazil as opposed to what they did in the United States. Uh, I think it's a question of uh, the context. That is, uh, that Brazil, or Brazilian nationalism in particular, uh, opened up a space uh, for Arabs uh, when, in contrast, I think uh, U.S. American nationalism, U.S. nationalism never opened up the space, for example, uh, peddling. Uh, Arabs peddled uh, throughout the Americas, um, the, as uh, they were called mascaches in Brazil. Uh, and here as well, they, they peddled as well. But uh, this history of, of Arabs peddling uh, has been virtually erased in the United States today. When, when one speaks of a peddler in the early, mid-20th century today, Uh, uh, they usually refer to Jews. Many, many European Jews uh, were peddlers in the United States. The fact that, that Arabs, many Lebanese and Syrians uh, and Palestinians as well were, were peddlers has been practically erased, even though there's a historical record of them peddling and opening up small businesses. Now in Brazil, in contrast, this past of peddling uh, is very much alive It appears in soap operas called uh, telenovelas, uh, yeah. the novelas. Arabs always appear as peddlers. Uh, it appears in popular novels. And when you say Arabi in, in Brazil, mm. there's this idea, ah, he's, he must be in business. He must be uh, mm. a trader. Yeah. Uh, and so with this contrast, it, it, it sort of shows that Arabs actually did similar things, yeah. yet... Um, their histories in the United States were erased, while well, their histories in, in mm. Brazil were were uh, were uh, um, uh, made <laughs> entered into popular uh, culture. Okay, أكيد هو بيقول إنه العرب بالبرازيل وبأمريكا ما كتير مغيرين ولكن فرص العمل وال أكيد والعيشة بغيرون ولكن كانوا معروفين خاصة بالتاريخ إنه هن التجار يعني نحن بنرجع على أصلنا الفينيقي لأنه حتى بأمريكا وبالبرازيل وقت تقول العربي بيقول آه التاجر لكن دكتور كرم your last words to the young generation of Lebanon because you are one of them even if you are an American citizen you have uh, just 30 seconds to tell your last words Um, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you uh, very profoundly for the opportunity to be able to speak. Uh, I want to send all my love to, to all, all, all my all my relatives, all my family in, in Lebanon. To the younger generation, I would say uh, that uh, we need to make the United States irrelevant in the relationships that uh, Lebanon uh, and the larger Arab world begins to develop with other regions of the world. That is, we need to begin to forge. Uh, south south linkages uh, that makes mm -hmm. the United States, that makes North America and Europe uh, irrelevant. Uh, we need to forge relationships between the Arab mm -hmm. world and South America and Latin America. We hope so. And Africa and we Asia. We hope so. Thank yeah, you Thank so you much. very much. We do thank you. And good luck for your new book also. Thank you Thank so you very much. much. Thank you.
مشاهدينا الكرام ما كنا مع دكتور جون كارم مباشرة من شيكاغو أنا بودعكم أخذ فرصة مسافرة بشوفكم ثلاثة بتسعة الشهر وهلا بحب إلا هاي لزميلتي نادية اللي مش عم بلتقى فيها هي بتسافر وبترجع أنا بسافرها طبعا <تصفيق> مو بياج بدي أقول لك إن شاء الله تتسلي وترتاحي ميرسي كلنا عايزين نرتاح ونتسلى تنرجع كلنا إنرجي أكثر إن شاء الله أنا بدي أقول لكل المشاهدين نهار الاثنين رح يكون إذا قلنا بداية شهر رمضان المبارك بدي أتمنى على الجميع ينعاد يا رب بالخير وبدي اذكر انه شاشة الام تي في بحضرت لهم مجموعة من البرامج الحلوة لكل حابين يتابعوها بعد انه الموسم بكون موسم كمان يعني القعدة بالبيت خاصة بوقت المساء بدي اقول انه الساعة 6 وثلث بتبدا محطاتكم مع الام تي في بعايزة تجوز بطولة هند صبري الباب في الباب او النسخة العربية عن Everybody Loves Raymond بطريقة تصوير يعني جدا متطورة ممثلين المرة الأولى بتشوفون عم بيقدوا يعني أي دور تمثيلي بحياتهم وبسكريبت مناسب جدا للعالم العربي ساعة تسعة إلا ربع بالهوى سوا ساعة عشرة بالهوى سوا طبعا النسخة الجديدة لويسام بريدي كمان مجموعة من الضيوف من مختلف المجالات رح يكون فيهم حديث شيق ومجموعة من المفاجآت بالهوى تحديدا فوق صخرة الروشة عشر المساء أمي وهو مسلسل بجزء الثاني مسلسل تركي وأخيرا مسلسل للمطرب الفنان المصري المشهول تامر حسني بعنوان آدم لكل اللي حابين يتابعونا طبعا رح نذكركم بهالموضوع بكرة بدي أذكركم بعد بشغلة وحدة mtv.com.lb هو عنوانكم إذا روحتوا أي من محطاتنا اليوم عليكم باي باي